Have you ever thought about starting your own podcast? When I was trying to get this podcast off the ground, I had a lot of questions. How do I record an episode? How do I get my show into all the apps that people like to listen to? And how do I make money from my podcast? The answer to every one of these questions is so very easy and simple. It is Anchor, y'all. It's Anchor. Anchor is a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing your podcast. Best of all, it is 100% and ridiculously easy to use. Most of all, it is free. And now, y'all, Anchor can match you with great sponsors who want to advertise on your podcast. That means you can get paid right away. In fact, that's what I'm doing right now by reading this ad here. I use Anchor for my radio broadcast as another branch to advertise and promote my episodes and my show that stems right from YouTube. And what I like about Anchor is that it distributes all to many platforms as well as it has an in-depth statistics to where you can see how your podcast is doing. That's cool, right? I love it. So if you always wanted to start your podcast and make money doing it, please go to anchor.fm forward slash start to join me and the diverse community of podcasters who are already using Anchor. That's anchor.fm forward slash start. My name is Red and I'm the host of the RH3 show. I cannot wait to hear your podcast. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this broadcast. Lord, we thank you for each and every one that is listening to me. (laughs) Under the sound of my voice, Lord, I thank you, Father, for my listeners. Father, I thank you, Father, for those that have been riding with me for 10 years, Father, Lord. Today, January the 10th, 29th, uh, (laughs) 20. 10 was the start of the RH3 show. Lord, I thank you, Father, for 10 more years, Father. Lord, as we continue to ride this ride and continue to climb higher heights, Lord, I thank you, Father, for each and every uh, step that we take higher and higher. Lord, I give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praises. Lord, I thank you, Father, that you continue to uh, 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 raise up somebody somewhere to use their power, their ability, and their influence to help me and help the RS3 Show brand. Because it is in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Please to bring you our feature presentation. Mic check one two one two. That's what's sitting the same as winners we can't live by the picture they paint Because they know that all the inner is changed So we must live out our lives with a sense of restraint Which means do I live and we ain't When you're controlled by the flesh What's up, everybody? Listen to the sounds here in my heart and in my voice. Today, uh, I believe it's today. It's either between today and January the 8th, but I think it's January the 10th. I think it's today. But anyway, whatever day it is, this whole week, we've been celebrating 10 years of the Arts 3 Show brand. And on today, we had some things planned, but we're going to shift it a little bit, all right? We're going to shift it a little bit. Again, apologize for being late on Wednesday and also on yesterday. I do apologize. And so today, what we're going to do, and I apologize for being late on today. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, y'all. This has been a tough, full week. A tough, full week. But I'm here for you all. But we're going to plan today, and we're going to give you all highlighted moments throughout the whole broadcast. Throughout the whole broadcast. First highlighted moment is our first radio broadcast, Ask Red Letter. And it's going to be Ask Red and Bonnie, all right? And it's during that um, 
um, first uh, radio uh, broadcast episode that I let you all hear on the other day. So here is the first Ask Red Letter, and it is with our special guest, Minister Bonnie Valentine, who is a life coach. And so, yeah. All right, be back with more of the RC Show. Here is our first highlighted moment of today, our first flashback piece. Yo. Yeah. If you're not tuning in to the Yards 3 Show Weekly, here's what you've missed. Um, we got a, a viewer question, and whenever um, uh, one of our viewers submitted the question, but since then she ha- has, you know, moved out of her particular situation, but she wanted, you know, to know if she followed the right guidelines or she wanted to hear what you had to say about her past situation. And she's in a new, uh, another situation, and I'll um, update you on that after I read this uh, question. But the question says, I have been going through some trials and hard times, and I know things will get better, and I'm working to improve my situation. But in the meantime, um, I had to move in for, uh, with someone for financial reasons, and we're starting to have major issues. And um, I'm going to, um, you know, uh, summarize her question, but mainly she's saying um, she's at, on the verge of a breakdown, and she has two children. One of her children lives with her, and he's a toddler, and the other one is about four years old. And, um, you know, she's he's, she's saying that the girl um, is not allowing her four-year-old there unless she's there, um, the lady that she's living with, you know, so she can supervise her. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And um, her toddler, you know, she's the the toddler somehow makes noises or whatever. And, you know, the lady that she's living with is not tired of it. And should she walk on, you know, like they say, walk barefoot on glass around her, um to, um, um, you know, satisfy her current living situation. What should she do in that, you know, being that the girl don't want her oldest child there, or the girl is making um, uh, remarks or is upset about her toddler baby, you know, there in the first place, what should she uh, do um, in this situation? And this come, you know, going on, you know, finding your purpose, because I believe that, you know, by her writing this, you know, she hasn't actually found it because she's, you know, in this right. type of situation or whatever. What should she do? Well, I guess the first thing, just not knowing the person or the variables and choices and decisions that mm-hmm. have been made prior to her uh, being in this situation, I guess it would be safe to say that she may want to sit down and uh, find someone, well, talk to the young lady that she's staying with, and also at the same time, I would I would recommend coach, coaching a life coach, and also I would recommend counseling. Mm-hmm. Because to make keep making the same choices and decisions is not going to um, help her out. It's going to continue. It may make her. It, it may prolong her to stay in the same situation she is. Exactly. And that's whether she moves in with someone else or stays where she is. Mm-hmm. But I I would say the first step would be to sit down and talk to the young lady that she is staying with. Communication is the key. Mm-hmm. And, and and share with her some things that you know she's going through or dealing with. And also the reason why I said I recommended the counseling or the coaching is because she's going to have you have to have a plan. Mm-hmm. Because if you a plan on how to move forward in life, a plan on how to get out from where you are, a plan on how to get out of the stuck mode of life. Mm-hmm. And and I would recommend those things for her to do first mm-hmm. and foremost. Sit down, talk to the young lady, and um, also I recommend the counseling or, or life coaching, and to help so, for someone to help her with a plan for her life mm-hmm. um, to make better choices and decisions uh, while she is there or or preparing to move out somewhere else. So you know that those are some things I would suggest her to do first because getting mad or. And if it, if it doesn't work out, her talking to the young lady, then, again, she has the option of at least speaking with a counselor or, you know, a, a, a professional life coach, mm-hmm. such as myself, which I would help one with. But, you know, sometimes when you don't understand the whole scenario or the story behind it, meaning how did she get to where she is, it's just um, it's kind of challenging to really uh, give out 
a lot of feedback because you, you don't really know the direction. direction Again, okay. I would recommend her talking to the young lady, and also I would recommend count, counseling or coaching. Okay. And her new, um, her current situation, she's, she's you know, still living with someone, but she's with her mother now, and... Um, uh, it, it's basically the same situation, but, you know, not really the same situation. She said um, it's not easy, you know, living with her mom, but um, she can have her both, uh, both of her children there. So it's basically, you know, the same, uh, you give the same uh, answer with her current situation, correct? Right. I would still recommend her seeing a certified life coach or a counselor, or sitting down with someone that she, you know, a pastor mm -hmm. that can help her make better choices and decisions so that she will not put her and her, herself and her children back in the same predicament, um, living and having to depend on someone else um, and to survive in life. It's just, it's just not a good situation. Um, I've been there myself where I've had to stay with someone, with my mother, uh, with my sister, and also, but each time I had a plan, mm -hmm. and so... You know, and a lot of that was through transition. But, um, you know, I was able to get my own place, my own house, buy my own house, actually. And so things can happen with a plan, mm -hmm. you know. And I always believe that you have to have a plan. You have to sit down and count up the cost. Though I didn't have any children, but and it was just me, but it was still challenging. So mm -hmm. I can only imagine how challenging it may be for her with two children. Um, and if she's not working, I would recommend, hey, that's the first thing you may want to go get a job. Mm -hmm. And and that she's home with her mom. Her mom is okay with the kids being there. That may be a, bit, a good start. Exactly. As I say at the end of each broadcast, know that I love you for real. And always remember to live every day, laugh every moment, and love beyond words. Join the Arch 3 Show family. For more about me or the broadcast, you can visit my website at thearch3show.com. From the old man into the new man. From the old man into the new man. We're transitioning from the old to the new this season on Arch 3. Have no fear. We still got you covered every Tuesday and Thursday from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now on our podcast platforms. Join us this week for all new broadcasts. The RH3 Show every Tuesday and Thursday from 6 p. to 7 p. Eastern. For more about the broadcast, please visit the RH3 Three show.com. With the word redeem, Joe, waking up live like a cappuccino. I know what he's done for me, so I can get up and praise him to a world redeem, Joe. K and B improvement. No job too big or too small. Heaven knows we do it all. From carpet cleaning to house turnover, deep scrubbing and more. Carpet restoration, we give you what you ask for. Reliable, reasonable, prices you can't beat. Let us serve you in all your cleaning needs. For we are dependable and neat. Call 301-379-5939. Kevin Best, www.kandbimprovement.com. All right, you guys, here is another letter that I love and another topic that I enjoyed throughout the radio broadcast of uh, the Arts 3 Show, throughout the 10 years of the Arts 3 Show, and majority, well, it's split, I say it's split half and half, because I've been five years on radio, and then it was five years on YouTube, but um, here is one of the topics that I really enjoyed talking about, is men in waiting, and there's a, a letter that I read from Boundless.org, and so here's one of my favorite flashbacks pieces so here's another flashback moment of the r3 show and it is a topic that i talked about men in waiting all right be back with more of the r3 show if you're not tuning in to the r3 show weekly here's what you've missed i have a letter that come from boundless.org and it is an advice of page and as I was studying this topic, I, um, I came across this question about 
men waiting and let's read it says i am a 20 year old guy i recently graduated from college i work a full-time job and i desire to be married i i've had two previous marriage-minded relationships each during college lasting about four to five months and both i would consider successful in quote albeit resolving a decision to break off the courtship the most recent ended three months ago while i certainly have much to learn mentors and counselors whom I trust, including my parents, have affirmed that they believe in I'm in my position in my life and mature to pursue marriage. That said, I'm receiving quite different different counsel on how to go by it. Some counselors say since that it's a guy's responsibility to find, in quote, a wife and pursue, I should be proactive in, to the point of actively following up with any attractive young woman that is a Christian and shares some int- common interests. On the other hand, others telling me that I need to be uh, wary of making marriage an idol or trying to force it to happen and that I need to be patient and wait on God. That, <clears throat> excuse me, that it may be too early since my last breakup that I should be, I should let friendships develop naturally and see who God puts in my path. The first feels like I would be pursuing marriage like I would look for employment and treat it finding dates like job interviews. The second feels like I'm sitting on my hands. Where is the balance between a guy's responsibility to find and pursue and the concept of waiting on God is as a content single boundless has written a lot of women's responsibility to trust and wait on god how does waiting on god apply to men and that brings me to the topic of today's real talk with red discussion which is entitled waiting men in waiting and um you know, I I did a lot of studying over the weekend and uh, come across somebody had inboxed me on Facebook. A friend of mine uh, had inboxed me this video regarding Tony, uh, Dr. Tony Evans and the title of his message and his sermon was, um, um, I believe it was entitled, um, let me see if I can find it. Uh, let's see. The name of this topic was Fasting for Singles. Fasting for Singles, I believe. And you can locate it on YouTube as well as you can go to my website at inside inside.mrh3.weebly.com and click on my, um, my name and then click on my blog post. And I posted it there. But, um, yeah, it was talking about what you should do, um, you know, if you're serious about... Finding, I'm sorry, it wasn't fasting for singles. Thank you, Holy Ghost. It was fasting for mates. And, um, you know, it was basically, you know, talking to the singles about what they, um, you know, should do in pursuit of finding a mate. And more so, um, you know, men, he used this subject, um, you know, the, the scriptures reference Genesis 24 and I'm going to, you know, go through that real quick. Uh, Genesis 24 and I'm going to read to the, almost to the bottom. And it's, and it's the basically talking about a bride for Isaac. Now Abraham was old and well advanced in age. Um, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. Verse two. So Abraham said to the oldest servant of his house who ruled over all that he said, please put your hand under my thigh and I will make you swear by the Lord, the God of heaven heaven and the God of earth that you will not take a wife you will not take a wife for my son from the daughters of Canaanites among who I dwell but you shall go to my country to my family and take a wife for my son Isaac then the servant Verse 5, then the servant uh, said unto him, perhaps the women will not be willing to follow me to this land. Must I take your son back to the land from which you came? Verse 6, but Abraham said, beware that you do not take my son back there. (laughs) I love it. Beware. He said in layman's term, like I just said, don't you take my son back there. But he said, beware that you do not take my son back there. And the Lord God of heaven and took me from my father's house and from the land of my family, whom I, who spoke to me and swore to me, saying to your descendants, I give this land. He will send his angel before you and you shall take a wife for my son and there 
you know and and from there and then verse 8 it says for i mean and if the women will the woman and if the woman is not willing to follow you then you would be released from this oath not only to take my son back not not only do not take my son there and number nine verse nine says so the servant put his hand under the thigh of abraham his master and swore to him concerning this matter that was verse eight let me read on to verse um uh i'm in the msg version so let's go to verse 9 in the new king james as i was reading and verse 9 reads uh so the servant put his hand under the thigh of abraham and his master swore to him concerning this matter verse 10 the servant took the 10 of his master's camels and departed for all his master's good and were in the land and he rose and went to mesopotamia to the city of noir and he verse 11 and he made his camels kneel down outside the city by a well of water at the evening time the time when the women go out to draw water then he said oh lord god of my god of my master abraham please give me success this day and show kindness to my master abraham behold here i stand by the well of water and the daughters of the men of the city are coming out to draw water now let it be that the young woman to whom i to whom I say, please let your, please draw in your pitcher that I may drink. And she says, drink, and I will also give your camels a drink. Let let her be the one you have appointed for your servant Isaac. And by this I will know that you have shown kindness to my master. Now that that. Pay attention to that, you guys. Pay attention to that. Verse 15, it says, And it happened before he had finished speaking. Behold, that behold, Rebekah, who was born of Bethuel, son of uh, Milchai, and the wife of Nora, Abraham's brother, came out with the pitcher on his shoulder. Now the woman was very behold, beautiful to the behold, I guess, eye of the beholder, a virgin. No man had known her. And she went down to the well, filled, the pig, filled her pitcher, and came up. And the servant ran to meet her and said, Please give, please let me drink a little water from your pitcher. pitcher. So she said, Drink, my lord. Uh, this was who is saying this I'm assuming this is coming from um, a, um, uh, let's see this is um, the servant this is the servant and is and is you know this is the servant you know speaking um, uh, you know for Isaac speaking you know he said that you know let this whoever come and I say let me give some water and he said not only give you you know give him water give the camel water so you know that's the servant so let me go back to verse 15 and it happened before he had finished speaking that behold Rebekah who was born of Bethuel son of Milcah the wife of Nora Abraham's brother came out with her picture on her shoulder now the young woman was very beautiful to behold a virgin no matter no man had known her and she went down to the well filled her pitcher and came up and the servant ran to meet her and said let me drink a little water from your pitcher so she said drink my lord then she quickly let her pitcher down to her hand and gave him a drink and when she finished by giving him a drink she said i will draw water for your camels also they until they have finished drinking then she quickly emptied her picture and pitcher into the uh throw uh, ran back to the well to draw water and drew for all the camels and then the man wondering at her <clears throat> remained silent so as to know whether the lord had made his journey prosperous or not so it was when the camels had finished drinking the man took a golden nose ring uh weighing half a shekel two bracelets for her wrist weighing 10 shekels of gold and said whose daughter are you tell me please is there room for your father's house for us to lodge okay so it goes on to um and you can finish reading but the focus point on that was what i was thinking was um the type of woman Rebecca was you know she not only she took care of him but she took care of 
his property. Bad lady. A bad lady. But, you know, men, I mean, <clears throat> he he prayed, you know, the servant made a request to known to God and God answered that prayer even before he, you know, got it out, finished it out of his mouth. So what I'm saying is men in waiting, what you have to do is in order to receive from God pray and fast as tony evans said men if you want to get to god as you fast and pray tell god what he's gonna get out of it and and you know and when single why narrow the field why narrow the field because if you want uh, god involved you must meet his criteria and his criteria could be anything you know that you're praying and you know for and what the word of god said main thing what one of his criteria is is you can be unequally yoked um in reference to second corinthians 6 14 through 16 and men again if you want god to be involved during your fast you got to get on your knees and tell god what you uh that you will not get into an unhealthy relationship you will not um uh be unequally yoked you will not um fornicate you will not do any of that so you have to be you have to wait on god so back to that letter what the dude was saying you know pursue or wait on god continue to pursue but also pray and fast as you waiting on god god is not gonna actually throw her in your lap but you have to work too and that's what i'm finding out for myself on this week is that you know i'm 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 positioning myself and i even said that before i'm positioning myself women is positioning herself to be found men you got to position yourself to look and the god to to pinpoint her but and to be stronger and to 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 you know to have a um a strong spirit and a strong discernment of who she is you have to fast and pray and find out you know what god says about her and god will strategically placed her you know to her whether it could be somebody that you already know you don't have to actually go out and in an interview process as this question you know stating but you know fast and pray 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 and it is okay um to do that and it is okay to you know seek god and and continue to find and and you know say god okay lay out what you 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 were asking and requesting for god and say okay god out of this if you do this out of this relationship we're gonna honor you we're gonna do this we're gonna do that i'm gonna do this as the head of the house y'all just don't know what god can do unless you seek him and fast and pray and fasting and praying is very very powerful and men you know i heard someone i don't know his exact name because i just stumbled upon it again over the weekend a t- an instagram account and he said men it is it you just do not kings you don't know how powerful you are not every woman is is worthy of, well and and i will say this not each and women the same thing go for you not every man is is worthy enough to bear your children but also women not men also every woman that you see is not worthy enough to bear your seed you you know it it i can't you know what that's one thing i stand on and look it's okay to wait it is okay to wait as i say at the end of each broadcast know that i love you for real and always remember to live every day laugh every moment and love beyond words join the arch through your family for more about me or the broadcast you can visit my website at the arch three show.com Does your ministry, business, or organization need a new brand? Or maybe you're looking for a graphic artist to give your letterheads, publications, or your upcoming event flyer a little more pop and eye appeal? Then Integrity Media and Design is your one-stop shop. They offer many services that will suit your needs. Services such as media production and editing, graphic design, business identity, and much more. That's Integrity Media and Design. More information is available at integritymedia.weebly.com or on Facebook, Integrity Media and Design 
or you can also find them on Twitter at official IMD7. Integrity Media and Design. Media and Design with integrity in mind. Are you looking for an experienced and passionate video production company that values your time and resources? Then look no further. 1301 Productions specializes in creative promotional concepts that promote your product, brand, or service. Our main goal is that we can help you reach your existing clients as well as potential clients successfully. Call today to set up your free estimate. 1301 Productions. Creative concepts for creative clients. For more information about 1301 Productions, give them a call at 424-835-1301. No, I'm not a writer. Okay. Want the latest news regarding the TV, movies, sports, politics, and music industry? It is time for the Inside Scoop of the Red right here on the RH3 Show. Hi, I'm Nina Taylor, and here is your Gospel News. Diane Carroll, one of television's premier African-American series stars, elegant actress, singer, recording artist, Diane Carroll, born Carol Diane Johnson on July 17, 1935, in the Bronx, New York, the first child of John Johnson and Mabel Falk Johnson. Music was an important part of her life as a child singing since the age of six with her Harlem Church Choir while taking voice and piano lessons, she contemplated an operatic career after becoming the 10-year-old recipient of a Metropolitan Opera Scholarship for studies at New York's High School of Music and Art. As a teenager, she sought modeling work, but it was her voice in addition to her beauty that provided the magic and the allure. When she was 16, she teamed up with a girlfriend from school and auditioned for Arthur Godfrey's Talent Scout show using the more exotic sounding name of Diane Carroll. She alone was invited to appear and won the contest. She subsequently performed on the Daily Radio show for three weeks and it was here that she began formulating a chic, glamorous image. Broadway roles for black singers were rare. At the age of 19, Diane was cast in the Harold Alden Truman Capote musical House of Flowers. In 1954, she and Miss Bailey supported Supported a riveting Dorothy Dandridge in the movie Carmen Jones. Diane Carroll once again supported Miss Dandridge in the movie Porgy and Bess in 1959. Little did Diane know that in the late 1960s, she would break a major ethnic barrier on the small screen. Though it was nearly impossible to suppress the natural glamour and sophistication of Diane, she touchingly portrayed an ordinary nurse and widow struggling to raise a small son in the series Julia in 1968. Diane became the first full-fledged African-American female star. A renewed interest in film led Diane to be dressed down in the role of Claudine in 1974 as a Harlem woman raising six children on her own. Then she appeared along Joan Collins on the show Dynasty in 1981 as the first African-American lead character on that show. Diane's character was also part of the short-lived Dynasty spinoff, The Colbys, in 1985. In 1987, she became Whitney Gilbert's mother in the series A Different World, which went on through 1993. Then she played troubled singer Natalie Cole's mother in Living for Love, the Natalie Cole story in 2000. Since then, she appeared in Grey's Anatomy in 2005 and White Collar in 2009. Diane Carroll, an African-American actress, singer, dancer, and I 
Icon will surely be missed. The Gospel News remembers Clay Evans, born June 23, 1925, in Brownsville, Tennessee, to Henry Clay and Estenali Evans. He was a graduate of Carver High School. Then he moved to Chicago to attend the Chicago Baptist Institute for Seminary Education. He attended Northern Baptist Theological Seminary, along with the University of Chicago Divinity School. He was ordained as a Baptist minister in 1950. He founded the Fellowship Missionary Baptist Church in Chicago on September 10, 1950, with five founding members. His sermons were broadcast on radio and television. In 1965, Evans joined the Reverend Jesse Jackson Sr. to promote the civil rights movement in Chicago. In 1971, they founded Operation Push Coalition to encourage black self-help. Evans served as chairman of the organization from 1971 to 1976 and became its chairman emeritus. He led his church until December 8, 2000, when Charles Jenkins succeeded him as senior pastor. Evans married Lutha May Hollingshed on October 15, 1946. They resided in Chicago. They had five children. Evans' death was announced on November 27, 2019. The Reverend Clay Evans will surely be missed. Well, that's your tribute to Pastor Clay Evans and your gospel news. I'm Nina Taylor, reminding you to connect with me on all social media and write me at thegospelnewswithnina at gmail.com. Let's get back to more great gospel music on this great station. Hi, it's Nina and my man Red. Stay tuned. More of the RH3 show is coming up next. From the old man into the new man. From the old man into the new man. We're transitioning from the old to the new this season on RH3. Have no fear. We still got you covered every Tuesday and Thursday from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now on our podcast platforms. Join us this week for all new broadcasts. The RH3 show every Tuesday and Thursday from 6 p. to 7 p. Eastern. For more about the broadcast, please visit the RH3. 3show.com With the word redeem Joe Waking up loud like a cappuccino I know what he's done for me So I can get up and praise him To a world redeem Joe yeah. I know I gotta raise him now Hi, I'm Rufus, host of the RS3 Show. I've been the host of this great platform for an entire decade. During this decade, I've been blessed to join the platform of radio and podcasting. As I continue to work my gift, I realize that it has been you, my day one family, and also my co-host family, who I call my radio broadcast listeners, who have gotten me to this point. Out of the many years of being in broadcasting as well as journalism, for the each level that I reach and as I continue to climb the ladder of success, it only serves me right to give you better content and also better quality of material. And by doing that, you know it costs. It costs. We're looking forward to getting new and up-to-date audio equipment, video equipment to revamp the RS3 show content on YouTube, attend award shows, and etc. So if the RS3 show have been a blessing to you, which it shows, and we know that you have been a blessing to us, which it shows, please consider sponsorship. I pray that God touches your heart and give you the nod to sow a seed into this broadcast. Even if you haven't listened to the broadcast before and feel led to be a blessing, I thank you in advance. If you will, please begin by sowing a financial seed of any amount. How you can do this, you can visit my website at thers3show.com and click on sponsorship. Whatever you sow, I pray that God will richly bless you and it all come back to you 100 fold. This show has been a blessing to me and has been a release for me. I love what I do, you guys. I love what I do. 
And as I say on every broadcast, every YouTube video, or whatever I do, know that I love you for real. And always remember to live every day, laugh at every moment, and to love God, to love yourself, and to love other people beyond words. Again, for more about me or the broadcast, and also to become a sponsor and to give financially, you can visit my website at thersreshow.com. Thank you all for returning back and enjoying our little highlighted full moments of the RH3 show. It is a all new broadcast, but we are celebrating. We are really celebrating 10 years of the radio broadcast brand throughout this whole episode, highlighting great moments of this broadcast. And we're going to do it again in July. So moments that you hear um, now, you probably won't hear it in July, but you'll hear some more highlight moments that we'll pull. And so on today, we just giving it to you, giving it to you some of our best highlighted moments. And so again, like the previous uh, uh, commercial says, please sponsor, please, if you like to contribute and and give back to the RH3 show, we would love to um uh, uh, accept your seed offering accept your seed blessing because we want to go places we want to uh, showcase what you are are, are, are uh, uh, doing for us we need some great equipment we need um, you know help with uh, you know other expenses to where we're going and if you would please go to the rs3show.com and click on the sponsorship ship tab and so any area that you can cash app um, um, uh, if you can buy um what is it called? Uh, GoFundMe. If you want to buy um, uh, PayPal, you can or mail. You can do that. We would love to be a part of it. Be, uh, love for you to be a part of it. All right. Thank you all so very much. We want to go to the Stellas as well. Please help us out with that. All right. Listen, listen. Here's another a real talk with red discussion uh men role in church that we love that i loved i love discussing and so here it is come back with more of the arch 3 show i hope you stay with us all right here's another flashback moment of the arch 3 show Yo. If you're not tuning in to the Guys 3 Show Weekly, here's what you've missed. You guys, I found an article that is talking about, um, you know, men and what they, you know, what they supposed to do in the church. And like I was saying before, this article said the same exact thing. And it says that today, um, few men are stepping up to take the reins of the church and steer it in a godly direction. Christian men today need to hear the word of first timothy three and one more than ever before and is and it says this is a true saying if a man desired the office of a bishop he desired a good work and that verse refers specifically to the office of overseer or ruling elder but the principles in it uh, applies to all form of leadership that men can be involved in in the church but yeah paul begins to uh, begins the verse by saying uh, that what follows it is a true saying you know it is a true saying he used those same four words uh other times in pastor epistles which will be um you know first timothy one and five four nine i mean one and fifteen and then four and nine and then second timothy two and eleven and then titus three and eight and each time they introduced those sayings uh that were probably quoted among you know commonly among the christians but you guys also that in uh in the in in four words the man is to lead labor listen and love the man is to take take leadership in both the home and the church and that's what i was saying before us men we have to take leadership and uh you know and 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 like i said and it's sad to say that sometimes you know us men are not willing to do that not willing to do that some wives and ladies have shared that they have um pushed into many important decisions because the men who are supposed to do them they have taken the back seat they have taken the back seat and we cannot do that men we cannot take the back seat we cannot do that we got to we got to be in the forefront and we got to let our wives girlfriends you know our children and not even if we don't have those 
let other women in, you know, of course, we're not the head over them, but let, you know, let other men see us doing something. That'll motivate us, you know, motivate them. Let other women see, you know, us do something, and that'll make them push their husband to do something. Let us see something. Then they, um, in, you know, children without father, they can gravitate to you, and, you know, you can be a, a figure to them. You understand what I'm saying? But yeah, they, I mean, they, they, anybody that can see us, whether, you know, we are a big influence in the church and not only in the church, in the home as well. I mean, really. But, you know, that, you know, taking the back seat, that is unhealthy and it's unbiblical, you guys. It's unhealthy and it's unbiblical. And we need to take responsibility and dare to learn to lead and to pray and to trust God to lead us first, like I said before, because we're not the head. Some people think that the Bible said, oh, yes, I'm the head and da 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 da. And, 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 and some men, I'm going to take a sidetrack, some men think that he's the head over every woman. No, you're not. You're the head over your own house. Household and let um, another man be the head over his household and the head over his family. God is the head, then you, then every else, everything else fall in between and under that. You know, we have to, we have to, you know, we have to, we have to dare to learn and to lead and to pray and trust God to lead us first but men you know we also are to be humble and to be self effacing leaders and loving and gentle in our leadership and when we do that we are to show gentle care and concern for those who are under ah (laughs) you know what Thank God for this this article that I'm reading, you guys. Thank God for the article that I'm reading. And thank, you know, first thing, the Holy Spirit for leading me into this topic and leading me to, you know, to even talk about this. But, you know, um, as I was saying, we are to show general uh, care and concern for those under our care, be it our children or... Um, you know, brothers and sisters, and and you know, fellowship or whatever. I mean, it could be anybody. It could be anybody. We are to be leader. And when I mean leaders, not leaders of them, but they could also see the leadership qualities in us. We are in 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 even showing general care to them, not only to them, but is to anybody else. Um, yeah. I cannot stress that enough, guys, that, you know, how how important our roles are. And again, like I said, us men is also labor in that what well, we are provided for for our families. In some sense, support of the ministry of the church with responsible stewardship of our substance. The, the man, us men, cannot be in in excuse me, indolent or ill-equipped. He is to be learned and to be ready for any good work. He is to be the prime mover in the church and in all its ministries. If the Lord has called him to be the pastor, elder, or deacon, he is to be accountable to the Lord for the ministries slash the church under his charge. And you know, this is all for the church setting. And then at the judgment seat of Christ, it is believed that all men will be answerable to God for more things than the ladies. Because and and you know, I and and I read that. But as I'm thinking, and we all have our own opinion. Then the author of this article have our own opinion. But when we get up there and be judged by God, you know, we are all we. I mean, you know, I will be accountable for our own things but you know God is not gonna more so give her lenience than me we're gonna be all accountable we're gonna have I'll say we're gonna have the same and the the same ranking um the same checklist as the next person whether it be woman or man <laughs> I can't even stress that enough 
I can't even stress it enough. In a few minutes, you guys, I'm going to be talking about effective teachers. Um, you know, what men can be effective teachers, whether it's teaching uh, boys, teaching, you know, the, 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 um, children in the home, in the community, whatever. I'll be right back. This is so good. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord, for the redirection of today's show because this, you know, I, I don't even have nothing written out for talking about um, men in the church. I, I really don't. Thank you, Lord, for the direction, and thank you, Lord, for, you know, the Holy Spirit in me and, and being used by Him and having the discernment to to move when God say move. So, did it... <laughs> I'll be right back. As I say at the end of each broadcast, know that I love you for real. And always remember to live every day, laugh every moment, and love beyond words. Join the Arch 3 Show family. For more about me or the broadcast, you can visit my website at thearch3show.com. Here is another Be Positive message. Here are 30 habits for success. Number one, be kind, eat well, exercise, meditate, be honest, dream big, be patient, judge less, smile often, love yourself, forgive easily, show gratitude, think positively, drink lots of water, 15, be yourself, keep an open mind, put your needs first, don't make excuses, speak well of others, listen to understand. Choose faith over fear. Don't make most of now. Exercise self-discipline. Look on the bright side. 25. Avoid social comparison. See failure as an opportunity. Don't take opinions to heart. Select friends that lift you up. Let go of what can't be changed. And number 30. Have a healthy sleeping pattern. Want to connect with me and go beyond the broadcast? Do so by following me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at The Arts 3 Show. You can also watch us on YouTube, youtube.com forward slash I rep a savior. That's youtube.com forward slash I R E P A S A V I O R. Follow me on social media. Hi, it's The RH3 Show. Connect. The RH3 Show every Tuesday and Thursday from 6p to 7p Eastern. For more about the broadcast, please visit the RH3Show.com. You guys, here is a highlighted Ask Red letter that uh, uh, that we received uh, throughout the uh, tenure of the RH3 Show brand. And I want you to hear it. All right? Here's a flashback piece, and I'll close out today's broadcast after this. Yo. If you're not tuning in to the Yards 3 Show Weekly, here's what you've missed. Here is the next Ask Red Letter. Then we're going to take a break and go with the final of to today's broadcast. Uh, and it says, My fiancé doesn't post pictures of me and his stepson on Facebook. Is it because he's trying to hide us? Or maybe he's cheating? He used he used to upload pictures of me and him together when we were dating. Now he doesn't let me tag him nor post anything on his wall. He used to treat me like a queen. Now I'm even lucky if he buys me flowers for father's day i posted a pic of him and my stepson and he deleted it and said if i don't stop posting on his wall he's going to block me i don't know what the issue is or am i just overreacting and that i want the world to know who he is with uh we don't communicate uh whatsoever and if i try he he ignores me and stay on his phone 24 7 i really don't know what to do i told him multiple times to get his stuff and go but he doesn't i love this man with all my heart but i don't know uh if this is worth it and you know what basically it ain't because you know there's many times people will ask will you uh sacrifice social media for your relationship and some people said most certainly will but if he's not you know if he's not 
you treating you like a queen like before how you get them is how you keep them so you know honey if he he's not doing what he's been doing drop him and let him go if you don't want to go have him removed if it's been over 30 days and he's been in your house you know it's going to be hard for him to get out of your house but when he leaves sit his stuff on the porch and have them locks changed in matter of fact, don't even put it so close to the porch. Have it in his yard or, you know, in the yard or whatever. Or even if you got a driveway, just sit in the mouth there so the neighbors won't be nosy and seeing what y'all are doing. But, you know, not you know, set aside, you know, social media. He's not treating you right, he ignores you, this, that, and the third. Communication is the key. If he's not doing what he needs to be doing to fulfill this relationship, kick the bucket and let him go. You know, there's is it's, it's time out for, for games, time out for not trying to make the relationship work. Let him go. Let him go. All right, you guys, I'll be back. I hope y'all have been enjoying it. It is the RS3 show right here on the number one inspirational source for heart and soul music. All right, be back in a minute. say at the end of each broadcast know that i love you for real and always remember to live every day laugh every moment and love beyond words join the arch 3 show family for more about me or the broadcast you can visit my website at the arch 3 showcom all right you guys that is it for our broadcast for the week know that i love you for real i love you for real I love you for real. Always remember to live every day, laugh at every moment, and to love God and love yourself and love other people beyond words. For more about me, the broadcast, and sponsorship, please visit my website at theartsweetshow.com as well as merchandise. Please visit my website at theartsweetshow.com. I want y'all, I want to read you all this before I go. Um... Uh, this is just a closeout for today's broadcast, and I got received this in a morning text this morning. It says it has a bunch of what I choose. I choose love. No occasion justified hatred. No justice uh, warrants bitterness. I choose love. Today I will cho- I will I will love God and what God loves. I choose joy. I will invite God to be the God of circumstance. I will refuse uh, the um, uh, the uh, the temptation of cynical, the tool of the lazy thinker. I will. Ref- refuse to see people as anything less than human beings created by God. I will refuse to see any problem as anything less than any opportunity to see God. I choose peace. I will live forgive. I will for, I will live forgiven. I will forgive so that I may live. I choose patience. I will overlook the inconveniences of the world and instead of cursing the one who takes my place i will invite him to do so rather than complain that uh the wait is too long i will thank god for a moment to pray instead of clenching my fist at new assignments i will face them with joy and courage and lastly i choose kindness i will be kind to the poor for they are alone kind to the rich for they are afraid and kind to the unkind for such is how god has treated me i love you all for real and i will see you all on Tuesday at 6 p.m. And on uh, uh, this uh, tomorrow, Saturday, the broadcast will air at noon, at 2, at 3, at 6, and at 7. At noon, at 2, at 3, at 6, and at 7. Our, no, at noon, <laughs> at 2, at 3, at 7, and at 8. 
noon, two, three, seven, and eight. Noon, two, three, seven, and eight. Monday at noon, Tuesday at two, Wednesday at three, Thursday at seven, and Saturday. I mean, and Fridays is at eight. All right, I'll talk to y'all soon, and I'll see you all next week for all new broadcasts. Peace. I gotta praise because he set me free. Christ said he paid free me at Calvary. I'm gonna dance and there's no stopping me. Don't let me change because I got the story. So go ahead and praise him because he's been so good. Give him all the glory like you know you should. So don't leave out the baby. Good night.